See them eyes in the background? Watch this. Deer sees it. Starting us off today, we have two campers, Jan and Larry, who claim to have been attacked by Bigfoot while out camping. Like James, maybe one day. The pair had encountered another group of campers, some of which had claimed to have seen Bigfoot in the area on previous occasions, including the night before. Around midnight, all the campers went back to their respective tents. Jan and Larry had just zipped up their own tent when they began hearing footsteps coming from the bushes. Before Larry had the chance to check out where the noise was coming from, the sides of his tent began to shake. The Bigfoot was attacking them, aggressively clawing, scratching, pushing, and pulling at the tent. Eventually it moved on, but Jan and Larry will never forget that day. The pair claimed that there are seven separate Bigfoots living in the area, and they've actually seen and heard the creature on separate occasions too. And they were able to capture photos of the Sasquatch's tracks. The name of the campsite was not disclosed, but the incident happened somewhere in Wisconsin, so do with that information what you will. This next case comes out of Colorado. So back in 2015, a couple were driving on a desolate road late at night when they felt something bump into their car. They backed up a bit to see what they'd hit, praying that it wasn't a person, but they never expected to see what they saw. They spotted a dark shape on the road, looking like it could have been a bear. They pulled out a phone and started filming their rear view camera, and this is what they captured. Now, whatever this thing is, it's only on camera briefly, but pausing and taking a look at the thing fully upright, rushing towards the car, it looks pretty big. It's hard to get a sense of how big it is because it's, it's pretty far away, but it looks to be taken up quite a big part of that one lane, and it looks fairly tall. What do you guys think, though? Sasquatch, dude in a costume, a bear that's maybe learned to move like a human? Let us know down in the comments. Next up, we have Teddy Roosevelt's retelling of a Bigfoot encounter as told to him by a German hunter named Baumann. The hunter Baumann, along with his friend, had gone out into the remote section of the Montana wilderness with one goal, to trap beavers. The men were likely the only hunters in the woods at the time because, as a general rule of thumb, hunters tended to avoid the area after a fellow trapper had been found mauled in the woods a few months prior. Baumann and his friends did not care. They set up camp and went out to lay their traps, but when they returned to their campsite, it was ransacked. Thinking the mess had been left by a bear, the two didn't really think much of it. Bowman began cooking dinner, and his partner left to investigate some tracks they'd seen. They were massive, and it was clear the creature had been walking on two legs. When the pair eventually settled into their tents for the night, they were weary, and rightfully so. They were awakened by an awful smell and the sound of branches breaking around their tent. The following day, the men decided to leave the area. Bowman went to gather the beaver traps while his partner packed up the camp. But when Bowman returned to the campsite, he was greeted by a horrific scene. His friend's body was laid out across the ground with a broken neck and bite marks all over. Bowman knew his friend was dead, and so he hightailed it out of there and uh, lived to tell the tale. Our next story comes to us from a deleted Reddit user who described their first-hand encounter with what they believe was a Sasquatch. The story goes as follows. So I was on this solo hike near a remote trail in the forest of Oregon. It was a beautiful day, sunny with a hint of a cool breeze, perfect for exploring nature. I've been on this trail before, but today something felt off from the get-go. About an hour into my hike, I started hearing these loud whooping sounds echoing through the trees. At first I brushed it off as some animal calls or maybe even other hikers goofing around, but the thing is, the sound was so intense, almost like they were coming from multiple directions at once. As I kept walking, the whoops turned into something more unsettling. They sounded closer, for one. Then I heard the snapping of branches coming from up the slope, like someone or something was trudging through the underbrush nearby. I stopped in my tracks, trying to listen more closely. That's when I saw rocks being hurled down from above. Luckily, I wasn't near or close enough for them to hit me. Now, my fight or flight was kicking in. I couldn't see anything through the thick foliage, but whatever was making those noises was definitely close. My heart was pounding in my chest. I turned around and booked it. I didn't catch a glimpse of whatever was out there, but I can tell you 
It was the most terrifying experience I've ever had while hiking. Next up, we have the Bigfoot attacks in the Valley of the Headless Man, which is actually in Canada. The attacks began in 1908. The bodies of two headless men appeared in the river of the valley. In 1945, another corpse was found headless again. And years later, a man was found in his sleeping bag, again with no head. While this might seem like the work of some senseless killer, it's important to note that natives in the area fled the land a few years prior to the first deaths. And other native tribes have actively avoided the lands for centuries. Perhaps they knew something those poor men who lost their heads didn't. Many people who have visited the area reported finding large bipedal animal tracks, hearing loud roars and breaking branches, and smelling sulfur and rotten fish, despite being quite far off from the riverbeds. All telltale signs that Bigfoot is near. Next on the list is the Portlock Bigfoot Attacks. Portlock is an abandoned town in Alaska, and as for why it's abandoned, there are a few explanations, one of which has to do with reported attacks of giant hairy ape-like creatures. So in the 40s, the small community of Portlock, Alaska, had a string of unsettling incidents. Doll sheep hunters were disappearing, grisly discoveries of dismembered bodies were being found in the lagoon, and reports were coming in about encounters with an entity known locally as Nantanak. Bigfoot. There have been tales about Bigfoot, or Big Feet, as Hannah refers to them as, in Alaska for decades, and many still believe it's these creatures that caused the town to be abandoned. By 1949, the community of Portlock had dropped as residents left for neighboring villages. Residents have come out with tales of encountering enormous footprints, spotting a towering hairy figure lurking in the woods, and discovering mutilated bodies of those who ventured into the wilderness. Next up, we have an anonymous story that was shared with SasquatchChronicles.com by a UK woman who was visiting California on business when she stumbled upon something wild. Well, actually two something wilds, because believe it or not, while on a hike, the woman had walked right into the path of two massive Bigfoots. At first, she assumed that what she was looking at were some kind of mountain lions, but when the creature stood up on two feet, she realized that wasn't the case. These animals were easily over seven feet tall. They were working together to collect seaweed. They were like eating the roots and then rubbing the seaweed on their fur. I don't know. They were by the waterway, where the woman had been hiking. The woman pulled out her camera to snap a few photos, but before she could, the cover on her camera lens fell and it made its way down to where the animals had been. The larger of the two was furious. He began charging at the woman and she thought for sure that these were her last moments, but the smaller of the two intervened. The two screeched at each other for a while, almost like they were speaking in some kind of gibberish language before they retreated back to the woods. The woman somehow made her way quickly back to her car. She really can't remember the walk there. She was so dazed, but she feels lucky to be alive. However, she regrets not getting that photograph. Next on the list, we have the Ape Canyon case. So this incident from 1924 is a tale from the Pacific Northwest of the United States that's become one of the most famous Sasquatch sightings in cryptozoology circles. According to the story, a group of miners claimed to have encountered a group of large, almost seven foot tall, hairy ape-like creatures in the vicinity of Mount St. Helens in Washington. The incident supposedly took place in Ape Canyon, which is what it's now called. A group of miners led by Fred Beck claimed to have been attacked by these mysterious creatures. Beck and his companions said that they had shot at the creatures in self-defense after being pelted with rocks, and later a bunch of these hairy creatures retaliated by attacking their cabin. The miners went outside the following day to find giant-sized footprints in the ground. Some believe the creatures described by Beck and his group were Sasquatch, or Bigfoot, or Big Feet, while others think it was all just a big, elaborate hoax. What is the plural of Bigfoot, you guys? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> Next up, we have the attack of the folk monster. Um, that's not a swear word, that's the name of the monster. And don't come for me, but it's basically Arkansas's version of Bigfoot, or Arkansas, as James would say. <laughs> the folk monster, also known as the Boggy Creek Monster, or the Swamp Stalker, is a massive bipedal ape-like creature with 
massive feet and a foul smell. Sound familiar? Exactly. In the spring of 1971, two young couples moved into the town of Folk, Arkansas and rented a small house near a creek. It wasn't long before the couples noticed something wasn't right. They would often hear heavy footsteps coming from their front porch and one night it seemed as though some kind of animal was attempting to gain access to their home. As the days went on, the pairs would often find massive three-toed footprints in the area around their house. And then one evening, they saw the creatures, massive, shaggy, smelly, standing tall on two feet. The creature again attempted to gain entry to the couple's homes, but one of the men fired at the creature, causing it to turn on the other man, who was badly injured and required medical attention after the ordeal. The police got involved, but were unable to locate the massive animal. And this event actually marks the only medically documented attack by a cryptid on a human in North America. So it's legit, you guys. Next, we have more footage of a Bigfoot chasing a car, this time in Russia. Now, I say Bigfoot, there's a very good chance it's just a dude in a costume or just some crazy person chasing the car because it's that low quality of a video, like pretty much all Sasquatch videos are. So the footage was taken in 2016, and we see someone filming the side of a rural road with their phone camera. The people already sound frantic, like they've seen something before they started filming. Then you see this dark figure start ambling towards the car and they drive off. But then they decide to stop the car and try to see if they can get a good shot of the creature again. Take a look. <laughs> Mermaids are probably the most popular mythical creatures to date, with origin stories coming from just about every corner of the globe. And just in case you've been living under an actual boulder, mermaids are humanoid mammal fish that generally come with the top half of a beautiful woman and the bottom half of some kind of mix between dolphins and marlin, also known as sirens and said to be quite the charmers with a nice set of pipes as thousands of stories exist about the creatures luring sailors to their watery death with nothing more than their beauty and a song. I guess beauty really is in the eye of the drunken sailor because it appears as though what was once thought to be a creature of ultimate fantasy is actually just a manatee or dugong, also referred to as a sea cow. So, myth busted? Well, the thing is, manatees are generally only found in waters of about 3 to 7 feet deep, maximum 10 to 17, which kind of begs the question, are we really sure that a dugong is all the sailors saw out on the rolling deep sea in the dead of night? Well, I'll put it to you this way. To date, only 5% of the ocean has been explored, so we never really know. Next up, we have the Lernaean Hydra, a creature that finds its origins based in Greek mythology. The Hydra is said to have been birthed by the mother and father of monsters, and to have three to seven heads, toxic breath and blood, as well as regenerative and immortal properties. Hercules was the one to defeat the creature in a daring battle in which he cut off the monster's heads only to watch in horror as they grew back stronger. Eventually, however, Hercules realized that by cauterizing the point of breakage between neck and head, he no longer had this problem. As Hercules came closer to victory, the mother of the beast, fearful for its demise, sent a giant crab down to the river in which the snake-like creature lived in order to assist it in the battle. But success was not given to the monsters that day as they both perished in the fight. A three-headed corn snake, appropriately named none other than Hydra, is our modern day version of the giant reptilian creature. The three heads are due to a phenomenon referred to as polycyclic cephaly that creates mutations within the animals. What do you think? So you know the giant crab I mentioned like just a minute ago? Well yeah, that's actually real too. Surprise! This mythical creature comes to us in the form of a Japanese spider crab. These monsters that come from the deep sea are massive, with a possible leg span of up to 13 feet across and a diet that consists of dead or decaying fish so basically corpses. Not only that, but the creatures are said to be immortal as they are thought to live for over a hundred years and also have the ability to regenerate their limbs. Another fun fact, when the giant crab reaches adulthood, its center body stops growing, but just like human ears and noses, its legs will continue to grow throughout its lifespan. Oh, and females of the species can also lay up to 1.5 million eggs within a single birthing season, so yeah. 
super cool. Next on the list, we have the Ningen, a staple of mid-2000s Japanese folklore. This aquatic whale-like humanoid is said to roam throughout the icy waters of the Antarctic region. The creature was reportedly first sighted by both Japanese fishing and research vessels claiming to have seen the human-like figures within the waters beneath their boats. The Ningen, which means human in Japanese, is said to be somewhere between 60 and 90 feet long, meaning it's ginormous, and many people believe the animal existence is being covered up by the government because of the fact that the original video said to have captured the Ningen has since been wiped from all corners of the internet. However, it appears that three photographs do still remain available for our viewing pleasure. One, taken from a remote operated camera that depicts the creature in a greenish glow, another from an aerial view showing off its massive size, and one more captured through ROV, remote operated vehicle footage, depicting the creature floating eerily in the dark of the deep sea. At our halfway point, we have the jackalope. Believe it or not, the horned rabbit is in fact real and also way creepier than we thought. The legend of the jackalope found its origins in North American folklore described as a jackrabbit with the horns of an antelope. While some cultures view the animal as an omen of bad luck, others view it as a sign of good fortune. In reality, it's actually neither. I mean, it's kind of bad luck for the rabbit as the occurrence of the horns, which look more like random spikes than antelope antlers, is due to a disease called Shope palinoma virus, which originally appeared in cottontails, not jackrabbits, and is closely related to the HPV virus. However, the Shope strain is non-transmittable from animals to humans. The disease which causes hard, dark warts to grow on the face of cottontails has now also been found within bush rabbits, black-tailed jackrabbits, snowshoe hares, European rabbits, and even domestic ones too. Next we have the sea serpent, not something you really want to see on a day out in the water, or maybe you do, as mythologically speaking, serpents were said to be representative of creative life force as well as fertility. Along with that, the fabled shedding of the oceanic reptile skin has been said to represent transformation, rebirth, and immortality. So how does all this talk of omens and myths translate to reality? The Titano Boa, a 47 foot long aquatic snake estimated to have lived 58 to 60 million years ago, discovered, fossilized of course, in the early 2000s by the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute in a coal mine deep within the rainforests of Colombia. Now, because the Titanoboa is now extinct, I'll give you a two for one. Today, scientists believe that the creature many sailors mistakenly mistook for a sea serpent is none other than the oarfish. As I mentioned in my previous video, that thing can grow up to be 36 feet long, making it the largest bony fish alive today. No 47 foot long prehistoric sea snake, but it is pretty close. This next one is for all of my Game of Thrones fans out there who I'm pretty sure like me will be very happy to learn that, no not dragons guys, I'm a researcher not a miracle worker, but like I said, dire wolves actually do exist. Well, did exist. Like I said, I'm no miracle worker. Episcion Haydeni, as they are scientifically referred to, went extinct around 5 million years ago, so we just missed them. But our human ancestors might have lived amongst them, as our earliest record of human life does date back to sometime between 5 and 7 million years ago. The massive canid would have stood 35 inches, about 3 feet tall at the shoulder, and had a length of just 1.2 inches shy of 8 feet long. The largest canine alive today, and therefore the closest depiction we have to the dire wolf, is the gray wolf, which comes in at an honestly just slightly less impressive shoulder height of 30 inches and body length of 6 feet. Next up is the Kraken. Like mermaids, I guarantee you've heard of this one before, but if not, here it goes. A gigantic legendary sea monster and another yet major enemy of our seafaring sailor friends, the Kraken has been known to sink ships in minutes with its gigantic squid-like tentacles and beak. Well, not so much squid-like as squid exactly. Thought to be nothing more than a myth up until 1856 when the discovery of the giant squid took place in 1856, when a Danish zoologist uncovered records of Danish men having caught the creature all the way back in 1550. The largest giant squid, also known as the chief squid, discovered to date is an insane 13 meters long, that's almost 43 feet, and weighs 495 kilograms, which is 1,091 
pounds. So while the animal probably wouldn't have been able to sink gigantic fleets of Voyager ships as the legends tell, I'm guessing it wouldn't have much trouble taking down a rowboat or two. Guys, I hate to do this to you because I so wanted it to be true that an inconceivably large shark species was roaming around the deep to one day be discovered by marine scientists and research experts, but the thing is, the megalodon just isn't that big. I mean, it's huge, but also some reports have suggested that it's literally the same size as a whale shark, and actually a bit smaller. As the largest whale shark apparently measured up to 18.5 meters, 60 feet, whereas the megalodon was said to have measured in at just 18 meters. 59 feet. But I get it, you're looking for a giant carnivorous shark. So let me give you this. An even bigger shark, I'm talking about a mega sized megalodon, possibly measuring in at more than 30 meters or 100 feet, might have existed at some point. You see, before humans began spreading out across the globe, there was something called megafauna, which basically just refers to really large animals, some examples being the dire wolf, mammoths, saber-toothed tigers, and woolly rhinoceroses. When humans began to encroach on the lands of these animals, it is predicted that there was not enough resources to support both them and our homo sapien ancestors. And because they were much larger than us, and therefore most likely had longer gestation periods and required more food and land, as we said hello to the agricultural revolution, we unfortunately waved goodbye to the majority of the world's megafauna on land. And when the fishing industry began to pick up, aquatic megafauna began to die off as well, most likely including the mega megalodon. But who knows? Again, only 5% of the ocean has been explored to date. All right guys, before we get into the last one, please let me know the weirdest creature that you've ever seen down below in the comments. Lastly, we have the chimera, a creature often referred to in Greek mythology as an amalgamation of many different animals fused together. And this thing is so cool to look at. The creature was discovered in the 1980s in the Karoo region of South Africa, and it's still around today, but the earliest fossil found so far dates all the way back to around 280 million years ago. But it is said that the species first came to be after diverging from their shark relatives almost 400 million years ago. Due to their ghostly appearance and their close relation to sharks via their prehistoric shark ancestors, this species has been appropriately nicknamed the ghost shark. Straightforward. I like it. The ghost shark can be found in pretty much all oceans except for the Arctic at a depth of about 2,600 to 8,500 feet. They weigh generally between 5.5 to 8.8 .8 pounds and are a cartilage based animal. They have one gill on either side of their bodies and have an upper jaw fused to their skull. Think about taking a swim with one of these as you fall asleep tonight. Wendigo. A wendigo originates from a folklore of Plains and Great Lakes natives as well as some First Nations. It's based in and around the East Coast forests of Canada, the Great Plains region of the United States, and the Great Lakes region of both the United States and Canada. Now, sometimes Wendigos are described as exceptionally thin, with the skull and skeleton pushing through its ash colored mummy like skin. Other stories describe the Wendigo as a well flushed giant who gets proportionately larger the more it eats. According to other legends, the Wendigo has a pointed or animal like ears with antlers or horns sprouting on its head. A Wendigo's eyes have been described as sunken or glowing like hot coals. Sharp and pointy teeth, extremely bad breath, and bodily odor are often traits of a Wendigo. It is usually, but not always, endowed with powers such as superhuman strength and stamina that allows it to stalk, overpower, and devour its victims. Wendigos are usually credited with exceptional eyesight, hearing, and sense of smell. They're said to move with the speed of the wind and have the ability to walk across deep snow or even over open water without sinking. Now it's said to invoke feelings of insatiable greed and hunger, and the desire to eat other humans, and propensity to end people's lives in those who fall under its influence. Number 9. El Chupacabra The El Chupacabra is a legendary creature in the folklore of parts of the Americas. In 1975, a series of livestock killings in the small town of Mocha, Puerto Rico were attributed to the Vampire of Mocha. Now each of these animals were reported to have its body bled dry through a series of small circular 
their incisions. A few months later in August, an eyewitness reported seeing the creature in Puerto Rico, where as many as 150 farm animals and pets were reportedly killed. Now, physical descriptions of the creature vary. In Puerto Rico and in Latin America, it is generally described as a heavy creature, reptilian and alien-like, roughly the size of a small bear, and with a row of spines reaching from the neck to the base of the tail, while in southwestern United States, it is depicted as more dog-like. Shortly after the first reported incident in Puerto Rico, other animal deaths were reported in other countries, such as Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Dominican Republic, El Salvador, Honduras, Mexico, Nicaragua, Panama, Peru, and the United States. Coming at number eight, we have Bigfoot. Bigfoot, also commonly referred to as Sasquatch, is an ape-like creature said to inhabit the forest of North America. North American settlers started reporting sightings during the late 1800s and into the 1900s, with the occasional finding of footprints, sporadic encounters, and even a grainy photos and videos adding to the mystery. Bigfoot is often described as a large, muscular, bipedal ape or human-like creature covered in black, dark brown, or dark reddish hair. Descriptions estimate the height of roughly six to nine feet, with some depictions having the creature standing as tall as 10 to 15 feet. Some alleged observations describe Bigfoot as more human than ape, particularly in regards to the face. Common descriptions include broad shoulders, no visible neck, and long arms. Now, Some alleged nighttime sightings have stated the creature's eyes glowed yellow or red. In 1971, multiple people in the Dailies, Oregon filed a police report describing an overgrown ape, and one of the men claimed to have sighted the creature in the scope of his rifle, but could not bring himself to shoot it because it looked more human than animal. Now, there have been hundreds, if not thousands, of Bigfoot sightings, and Bigfoot has come somewhat of a pop culture figure, as there are TV shows, movies, and fan clubs dedicated to him. Number 7. Lizard Man In the folklore of Lee County, South Carolina, the Lizard Man of Scape or Swamp is an entity said to inhabit the swampland of the region. First mentioned in the late 1980s, the sightings and damage attributed to the creature yielded a significant amount of newspaper, radio, and television publicity. On July 14, 1988, the Lee County Sheriff's Office investigated a report of a car damaged overnight while parked at a home on the edge of Scape or Swamp. The car reportedly had tooth marks and scratches with hair and muddy footprints left behind. Sheriff Liston Truesdale noted that this was the start of various claims that eventually turned into a story about a lizard man in the swamp. Prompted by the news of the vehicle damage, local Christopher Davis reported to the sheriff that his car was damaged by a creature he described as green, wet-like, about seven feet tall, and had three fingers, red eyes, skin like a lizard, and snake-like scales two weeks earlier. According to Christopher, he was driving home from working a night shift at a fast food restaurant when his car got a flat tire. After fixing it, he saw a creature walking towards him. He got in his car and began to drive, but the creature was soon on top of the car. He applied the brakes, causing the creature to roll off the car, giving him enough time to escape. Number 6. Loveland Frog In Ohio folklore, the Loveland Frog is a legendary humanoid frog described as standing roughly 4 feet tall, allegedly spotted in Loveland, Ohio. In 1972, the Loveland Frog legend gained renowned attention when a Loveland police officer reported to a colleague that he had seen an animal consistent with the description of the frogman. After a reported sighting in 2016, the second officer called a news station to report that he had shot and killed the same creature some weeks after the 1972 incident and had identified it as a large iguana that was missing its tail. Now, according to various legends, the creature was first sighted by a businessman or traveling salesman driving along an unnamed road late at night in 1955, with some versions of the story specifying the month of May. In one story, the driver was heading out of a Branch Hill neighborhood when he spotted three figures standing erect on their hind legs along the side of the road, each three to four feet in height, with leathery skin and frog faces. In other versions of the story, the creatures were spotted under or over a poorly lit bridge, and one held a wand over its head that fired a spray of sparks. Number 5. Bat Squatch The Bat Squatch is a flying cryptid that was allegedly seen near Mount St. Helens in the 1980s. This creature is said to have yellow eyes, a dog-like muzzle, blue fur, sharp teeth, bird-like feet, and a leathery bat-like wings that span up to 50 feet. In addition, Bat Squatch is said to be 9 feet tall and has the ability to affect car engines. In April 1994, Brian Canfield was driving in Washington's Pierce County when his truck suddenly died. He said a large creature landed 
suspended in front of him that was human-like, nine feet tall, with bat-like wings and a coat of blue fur. A possible second sighting was reported in 2009 near Mount Shansta in California. Several hikers witnessed a huge creature with leathery wings spanning 50 feet fly out of a crevice in the mountain. At first, an eyewitness described the creature as having a head similar to a pterodactyl. However, upon reconsideration, the witness claimed that it was more akin to a flying fox bat. Then, in June 2011, a man was in his yard walking his dog and said, I saw something flying in the sky. It had bat wings, blue fur, and had a face similar to eyes growing red. It was about nine feet tall at the least, and I watched it just fly away. Number four. Jersey Devil. The Jersey Devil is a legendary creature said to inhabit the forests of the Pine Barrens in South Jersey. This creature is often described as a flying biped with hooves, but there are many variations. The common description is that of a bipedal kangaroo or wyvern-like creature with a horse or goat-like head, leathery bat-like wings, horns, small arms with clawed hands, legs with cloven hooves, and a forked or pointed tail. It has been reported to move quickly and is often described as emitting a high-pitched blood-curdling scream. According to popular folklore, the Jersey Devil originated with a Pine Barrens resident named Jade Leeds, also known as Mother Leeds. The legend states that Mother Leeds had 12 children, and after discovering she was pregnant for the 13th time, she cursed the child in frustration, declaring that the child would be the devil. Born as a normal child, the 13th child transformed into the creature with hooves, a goat's head, bat wings, and a forked tail. Growling and screaming, the child beat everyone with its tail before flying up the chimney and heading into the pines. It was in some versions of the tale that Mother Leeds was supposedly a witch, and the child's father was the devil himself. Then one of the first reported Jersey Devil sightings was in 1812, when Joseph Bonaparte, Napoleon's older brother, claimed he saw the Jersey Devil while hunting near his Bordentown estate. Number 3. Mothman In West Virginia folklore, the Mothman is a humanoid creature reportedly seen in the Point Pleasant area from November 5th, 1966 to December 15th, 1967. The first newspaper report was published on the Point Pleasant Register, dated November 16th, 1966, titled Couple See Man-Sized Bird, Creature, Something. The national press soon picked up on the reports and helped spread the news story across the United States. On November 15th, 1996, two young couples from Point Pleasant, Dickie and Linda Maxwell, and Steve and Mary Mallet told police that they had seen a large white creature whose eyes glowed red, standing at the side of the road near the TNT area, the site of the former World War II mutations plant. Linda Scareberry described it as a slender, muscular man, about seven feet tall with white wings, and said that she was unable to discern its face due to the hypnotic effects of its eyes. Distressed, the witnesses drove away at a high speed and said that the creature flew after their car, making a screeching sound. It pursued them as far as point Pleasant city limits, and during the next few days, other people reported similar sightings after local newspapers reported it. Two volunteer firemen who saw it said it was a large bird with red eyes. Number 2. Skunk Ape The skunk ape is a cryptid ape-like creature that inhabits forests and swamps in the southeastern United States. Perhaps most prominent in the state of Florida, the alleged creature is also commonly referred to as the Florida Bigfoot and is often compared to or called the cousin of Bigfoot, a prominent subject within North America popular culture. Now, The skunk ape is commonly described as a bipedal ape-like creature, approximately 5 to 7 feet tall, and covered in malted reddish-brown hair. It is named for its foul odor, often described as being similar to a skunk. The skunk ape has been recorded as appearing in Florida, Georgia, and Alabama folklore since European settlers first occupied the region. In 1818, local newspapers reported a story that spoke of a man-sized monkey raiding food stores and stalking fishermen along the shore. And coming at number one is skinwalkers. In Navajo culture, a skinwalker is a type of harmful witch who has the ability to turn into, possess, or disguise them themselves as an animal. According to some traditions, skinwalkers were once healers and medicine men who were corrupted by their own power and turned evil. By draping the hide of certain animals over themselves, the witch takes on the form and traits of the animal. Now, in doing so, the witch gains the animal's strength, speed, and endurance. They sometimes transform themselves into animals simply for the purpose of traversing great distances quickly. They may also transform in order to wreak havoc on others, as well as their identity will be hidden and they'll be able to escape quickly if necessary. Now, they curse people and cause great suffering and death, one Navajo writer explained. At night, their eyes grow red like hot coals. It is said that if you see the face of a skinwalker, they have to kill you. If you see one and know who it is, you will die. If you see them and you don't know them, they have to kill you to keep you from finding out who they are. 
Skinwalkers are also telepathically linked with each other, enhancing their coordination during hunts and fights, but allowing little or no privacy at any time. Now, they can also copy animal or human voices to lure victims to feed on. They generally copy the sound of a human that is in need of help, so make sure you don't get tricked. This is us at number 10. Can you guys think of anything scarier, you know, than meeting a creature that had a head and legs of a goat, but had the body of a human? Is this real life right now? Well, what if I told you guys that the goat man is also notorious for carrying around a large axe? I mean, seriously? Well, as it turns out, it, it might be, it might be real. According to this legend, the goat man was created by a scientist whose experiment went horribly wrong. He transformed into a half man, half billy goat. <laughs> and I guess he didn't like what he saw in the mirror because he took out his rage on people with an axe. This legend took off in 1971, and now people are saying that the goat man wanders around in the woods. And he's looking for any living creatures to torment with a sharpened axe. And maybe he just wants dinner. Climbing into our list at number 9, we have the skunk ape. Yeah, I'll be the first one to say it. His name doesn't really sound that appealing at all. It sounds pretty smelly. Well, apparently these monsters are known for having a really bad stench and they can supposedly be found lurking in Florida. Well, sorry about that, Florida, for you guys watching over there. Well, the skunk ape is said to be about seven feet tall and looks like a gorilla that smells a hundred times worse. Sightings of the skunk ape date back to the 1940s, but in 2000, a sheriff's department received an anonymous letter that had several pictures of the smelly monster wandering around at night. Oh, and there is also this footage. So what do you guys think? Could this be a real life skunk ape? Bigfoot comes stomping on this list at number eight. Yeah, that's right. We have an oldie but a goodie. Honestly, some people are quick to write off Bigfoot as nothing more than an old urban legend, but I bet most of you would be horrified if you actually saw this 15 foot hairy beast coming close to your campsite. Seriously, look how big it is. <laughs> I don't think it is a human. I think it's a there are actually a ton of reports of people seeing a Bigfoot wandering around North America for at least a century. So, I mean, how can this one be made up? Is no one else concerned that there might actually be a giant hairy ape man bulldozing through our forests? There was even a website dedicated to documenting every sighting that happened in each state. Giant apes used to exist in the past, so it could be plausible that maybe they never went extinct. And judging by the unexplainable footprints and other Bigfoot evidence that we've stumbled upon, I'm not ready to rule anything out. Flying into number seven on our list, we have the Thunderbird. Most people say that the Thunderbird is just a mythological creature from Native American folklore. But then again, how can we be so sure? The Thunderbird is so large and strong, people used to say that it can carry a whale in their talons. And because of its size, lots of people are arguing that the Thunderbird couldn't exist in our time without being seen. Well, I guess it's hard to miss something, you know, that large. But what if the Thunderbird was real and he just went extinct? It's definitely something that I would have to see to believe. This is an actual bird a man. or a oh, large him. child <laughs> in a child. Biting into our number six spot, we have the Chupacabra. The legend of this monster first began over in Puerto Rico in the late 1990s. People said that he's about five feet tall. He has large black eyes, spikes running down its back, and he has a very sharp long claw. The Chupacabra is blamed for literally sucking the life out of its livestock because it enjoys drinking the blood from unsuspecting animals. Mysterious Chupacabra, an elusive animal said to feed off the blood of livestock. Well, that question has residents in Nelson County buzzing after a farmer captures the unusual and If this is real, who's to say that he won't try to suck the blood from us, from humans? Flying to number five, we have the Mothman. If you're having problems picturing what this, you know, what this might look like, because I'm thinking like the Mothman, a man with like butterfly wings. Well, this is what it looks like. We have a giant terrifying human with glowing red eyes and wings. Now that I think about it, the Mothman kind of sounds like, kind of sounds like a demon. Back in 1966 in West Virginia, lots of people started reporting seeing the Mothman in the flesh. Everyone described him, you know, the exact same way, and for months, more and more people reported sightings, but they all suddenly just stopped in December of 1967. So did the Mothman become extinct, or is he just hiding himself a lot 
better. But wait, get this. Before the last reporting, a bridge in the US cracked, which sent dozens of cars to fall in the river. When the bridge fell, 46 people died and the deaths were immediately connected to the Mothman because well, people saw a strange large creature with wings and red eyes right before the bridge collapsed. I mean, coincidence? Maybe, but maybe not. The Jersey Devil breaks his way onto this list at number four. Well, let me show you guys a picture of what the heck I am talking about. Is this real life right now? This ugly monster is said to have the wings of a bat, the face of a horse, and the tail of a lizard? So yeah, it's safe to say that you would never want to run into this hideous creature in a dark alley, but if you live in New Jersey, that might be a scary reality for you. Oh, and um, yeah, let's not forget about the small arms with sharp claws, creepy hooves, and his forked tail. People who have apparently seen the Jersey Devil have said that he moves really fast and he is capable of yelling a high-pitched, blood-curling scream. Should I demonstrate what that scream sounds like? No, I, you're, I don't want your ears to start bleeding. Number three, we have the bunya. Don't be fooled by its name. It actually might sound like a, a cute variation of a bunny, but trust me, this thing will haunt your worst nightmares. No one knows exactly what the bunny up looks like, but everyone knows that they should avoid it at all costs. It's known to swallow children and livestock whole if they get too close to the edge of the water. This creature is an aquatic mammal, and it will release a loud shriek right before it pounces on its victim and devour them. The bunny up was reportedly spotted in Australia by aboriginals, and it was last seen in the mid-1800s. Some people who think that this is just a hoax have gone too close to the riverbed and they were never seen or heard from again. So would you guys want to risk it? I don't think so. Up next, number two, we have the Dover Demon. This creepy guy is a really famous cryptid that has been spotted around Dover, Massachusetts. He's being described as a gray or white creature that has large glowing eyes and abnormally long fingers. He can walk on two feet, but as creepy as it might sound, he prefers running on all fours. The first sighting was in 1977, when two different people reported seeing the Dover Demon in different parts of the town. They both drew sketches of it, and both sketches almost looked identical. I don't know about you guys, but I'm thinking he might be real, and if that's the case, I feel bad for you guys who live out there in Massachusetts. Be careful. Sinking its way into our number one spot, we have the Kraken. According to the folklore, the Kraken, well, it's a giant sea monster that dwells off the coast of Norway and Greenland. What's that? Holy oh. moly, what's that? Whoa! The legend of the Kraken has been around since the 18th century, and apparently sailors who spotted this beast said that it was a giant squid that was so large that when any part of its body was stuck out of the water, it looked like a floating island. But that's not all. Sailors have said that the Kraken would use its large tentacles to engulf ships and drag them down into the icy water. This monster is also known to cause a deadly whirlpool just by submerging itself underwater. Paleontologists have argued that during the prehistoric times, the ocean was once home to 100 foot long squids and they would feed on whale sized animals. So could the Kraken actually be real? Well, you know what? I'll let you guys be the judge of that. Today with the werewolf of defiance. It's uh, the summer of 1972. Two railroad workers were hard at work on the Norfolk and Western Railway when all of a sudden one of them, Ted Davis, looked up to see a large wolf-like creature with a wooden board grasped between its paws which it then whacked the man in the shoulder with before turning off into the bushes to run away like a like a coward. Five days later, Ted and his coworker Tom Jones returned to the railway for another day's work, hoping they wouldn't be seeing the big furry monster again. Only they did. Only this time it was a bit of a safe distance away. Not that I'd ever feel a safe distance away from a werewolf, but that's just me. And then they reported the sightings to the police. Right around this time, more and more wolfman sightings began piling in, and locals began and to panic about the potential of being mauled by a six foot tall werewolf. Imagine actually like feeling that that was a possibility. Like you're heading out of the grocery store and you're like, damn, like really hope I don't run into a lycanthrope today. 
That's their life, apparently, in Ohio. Up next, we have the Loveland Frog. This mysterious creature has been reported to have been sighted in Loveland, Ohio. The amphibious creature is said to resemble a bipedal frog, standing upright on its hind legs, measuring up to four feet tall. Not that big, but pretty big for a frog, though. Got leathery skin, webbed fingers and toes. You all know how frogs look. And it's also got those iconic glowing large eyes. The first reported sighting of the Loveland Frog was in 1955 when a man claimed to have seen three of them on the side of the road holding some kind of strange wand like device. Again, only in Ohio would you spot three large frogs practicing magic under a bridge. I, I really gotta visit Ohio sometimes. It just seems like such a fantastical place. Again, Narnia got nothing on Ohio. Anyway, since that initial 1955 sighting, there have been several other ones, including one by a police officer in 1972 who reported seeing a creature fitting the description of the Loveland frog scuttling across the road and then hopping over the guardrail into the little Miami River. Another officer even claimed to have shot at the creature, but it escaped. Some people believe the Loveland frog is an escaped exotic pet or mutated frog, while others speculate that it is a supernatural type of creature. At number eight on the list, we have melonheads. The melonheads are a group of cryptids that have been reported to have been sighted in various locations in Ohio, but are primarily found in the Cleveland suburb of Kirtland. These creatures are said to be small in stature with large bulbous heads and distorted facial features. According to legend, they were the result of an experiment gone wrong in which scientists conducted unethical experiments on Orphans, resulting in the creation of these strange bobble headed beings. Some variations of the story also claim that the melon heads are the descendants of a family who suffered from a rare genetic disorder, maybe, that you know, caused their heads to grow abnormally large. Some even say they could be of extraterrestrial origin, which, which whatever they are, though, I want to see one. I, I'm telling you, I'm coming to Ohio to go on a full cryptid scavenger hunt, and I'd better see me a, a weird, deformed melon head. And number seven, it's Bessie. The Bessie Lake Monster, or the Lake Erie Monster. It's a legendary creature that is said to inhabit Lake Erie. The creature is described as a, a big, similar in appearance to Loch Ness Monster, kind of long necked, humpback, as well as a serpentine, kind of dinosaur like body. The first reported sighting of Bessie dates back to 1973 when a duck hunter saw a large serpentine like creature thrashing in the lake and startled by his gunshots. And since then, numerous sightings have been reported over the years. Some eyewitnesses claim to have seen the creature swimming close to their boats or even on the shore, while others have reported hearing strange eerie sounds coming from the water. Despite many attempts to capture or study the creature, there is no concrete evidence of its existence. However, legend of Bessie persists and many people believe that there is something mysterious lurking beneath the surface of Lake Erie. When it comes, you know, when it comes to creatures that reside in the water, I also, I gotta say, it seems plausible. We don't, we don't spend a lot of time underwater, you know? Lots could be lurking in those murky depths. You never know. Number six, Mothman of Gallia County. Most of us have probably heard of the infamous Mothman. Large, Winged, glowing red eyes. It was first reported in West Virginia in 1966. But one of the most famous sightings of this large flying insect was over the Silver Bridge that connected Point Pleasant, West Virginia to the village of Gallipolis, Ohio. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but I think it's Gallipolis. This sighting happened just a year after the first reported Mothman sighting. And right around the time when the creature was spotted on the Silver Bridge, it collapsed. And some still believe that this mysterious cryptid was the one responsible. There have also been reported Mothman sightings before other big disasters, which has led some to speculate as to whether Mothman is a bad omen or if it is simply appears as kind of like a warning of impending doom, bad or good. Orange eyes. Now, this is a uh, Sasquatch type creature that could very well be the same type of creature as a couple others we'll be discussing on the list. There are many Sasquatch variations seen throughout Ohio, but 
This one is famous for, as you, as you could probably imagine, it's got these glowing orange eyes. There have been reports of strange creatures with orange eyes lurking in Ohio, said to reside in the Riverside Cemetery before moving to the woods by Mill Lake. Witnesses described the creature as resembling a large bipedal humanoid with a muscular build and a hunched posture. Its eyes, once again, seem to emit an otherworldly glow. The creature is reportedly very fast and agile and has been known to vanish into thin air when pursued. Some locals believe that Orange Eyes is a Bigfoot type creature, but there are also those theories that maybe a kind of supernatural being or extraterrestrial entity as well. And number four, we have Dogman. Most Dogman reports come out of Michigan, but there have been sightings in Ohio as well. According to witnesses, the Dogman is a bipedal, wolf-like creature that stands between six and seven feet tall with a muscular build and a snarling dog-like face. The first reported sightings of the Dogman in Ohio occurred in the late 1980s. Since then, there have been numerous other sightings reported in the state. Witnesses have reported seeing the creature hunting in the woods stock and prey even running across highways at high speeds. Some skeptics believe that the sightings, of course, may be misidentifications of known animals like bears or wolves, while others believe that the Dogman is a real undiscovered species that is yet to be officially documented by science. Number three, the Crosswick Monster. Now, there's only one report of this cryptid, but it's, it's quite the entertaining tale. It's like something out of a classic 1950s monster movie or something like that. And it's a pretty famous piece of Ohio cryptid folklore. The story goes that in 1882, two boys, Ed and Joe Lynch, began hearing strange sounds coming from the tall grass of a bush behind them. They were fishing. And then before they had time to think, a large four-legged lizard creature popped out from the bushes and began making its way toward them. The boys tried to make their escape, but it caught the 13-year-old Ed in its mouth and began dragging him towards a large hollowed out tree. Three men had heard heard the boys screaming and managed to make it to Ed's aid before he was pulled into the tree, although he was badly injured. A group of like about 60 men were formed armed with axes and clubs and they tried to slay the beast but the creature managed to escape, actually standing on its hind legs at one point. It's pretty horrifying. The group chased the creature which retreated into a hole under a large hill of rocks. The creature was never seen again. Described as black and white in color and roughly 12 feet in length. Number two, the Minerva Monster. This has to be one of the most famous Sasquatch sightings in Ohio. In August of 1978, in the village of Minerva, the first sighting of the creature was reported by the Caton family, who had seen a large hairy creature in the gravel pit outside of their property, looking to be about 300 pounds. Soon became known as the Minerva Monster and terrorized the Caton family on more than one occasion. They described seeing it peering through their kitchen window one night, awful, and when police came to investigate, they saw large footprints around their home with a terrible smell lingering in the air. The creature was also reported to have thrown rocks at their home one day, and they even reported seeing two large hairy bipeds on a hill by the strip mine near their property. The family has been adamant about what they saw ever since, and their story has remained consistent. It wasn't just the Catons who had run-ins with the large ape-like creature, though. Other locals began reporting seeing a similar creature in and around the Minerva area around the same time. And that's going to bring us to our number one spot, the Ohio Grassman. There's a, a very good chance that the Minerva monster and orange eyes are the very same creature I'm describing here as they're all big, all furry, ape-like creatures. Grassman is pretty much Ohio's nickname for Bigfoot, described as a large, hairy, bipedal creature standing between seven and nine feet tall. Grassman is said to have human-like face and a muscular build. Witnesses have reported hearing eerie vocalizations and howls coming from the woods, as well as seeing large footprints that they believe belong to the creature. The first reported sightings of the Ohio Grassman occurred in the late 1800s, but the creature gained widespread attention in the 1970s when multiple sightings were reported in the state. 
Since then, there have been numerous other sightings reported in the area, while some skeptics dismiss the sightings, of course, as misidentifications of, you know, animals or even hoaxes. Others believe that the grass man is real and he's an undiscovered species. Jackalope. Ever hear of a jackalope? If you haven't, this creature is basically just a small bunny rabbit with antlers growing out of its head. While these creatures were created by joking taxidermists, many residents of the Midwest actually believe that this creature is real. And you know what? They might actually not be wrong either. In June of 2020, Smithsonian Mammal Collection manager Suzanne Pirac came across what looked to be a jackalope in the specimens collection. At first she just thought it to be fake, but upon closer inspection, she found out that the creature was indeed real and not actually the work of some joking taxidermist. They technically weren't horns though in its head. They were actually cutaneous horns slash tumors. These growths are caused by the Shope papillomavirus, which caused cottontail rabbit papillomavirus, also known as CRPV. The human equivalent is HPV, but our recent HPV vaccine actually derived from the CRPV. So thanks tumorous rabbit or uh, the jackalope, I guess you are real. At number nine, we have Japanese spider crabs. These massive crabs crawl along the bottom of our waters and can get up to 12 feet in length. They can also reach weights of up to 45 pounds. Apparently these massive creatures are actually quite gentle but let me tell you, <laughs> for a guy that really enjoys his crab, I'm not sure how much I like this one. I think once it was cooked and on my plate, I mean, I think I'd be fairly happy because I mean, look at the size of that thing. That's a lot of crab leg. But if I were to come across one by myself in the ocean, I would probably be swimming away pretty fast because these things look freaking creepy. I mean, you're telling me this thing is friendly and you're not going to come at me with those giant claws? Yeah, okay, cool. I believe you. Not. Number eight, we have one of my faves. Folks at home, what are the two things we know Dewey hates the most on this channel? Dolls and that's right, let's say it together, cockroaches. Yeah, once again, we have cockroaches, but not just any kind of cockroaches, hissing cockroaches. These guys can be found just about anywhere in the world, which is great. They can be found in any warm areas of buildings, near the moist baseboards and basements. And these guys are even worse than the cockroaches I notoriously hate because not only are they just hard to get rid of, they also hiss loudly at you too. Hell to the freaking nah. These gross bugs are mysterious as sometimes they can hide quite well. And I think it's pretty obvious here that I definitely wish they didn't exist. But here they are anyway, aren't they? <laughs> oh, what a time to be alive. At number seven, we have the scorpion fly. I have never heard of this one before, but after seeing a picture of one, I don't think I want to learn any more about them than what I have to. Anyway, while they may not be poisonous like their land cousin, the scorpion, they still are not great to look at. Turns out the tail is actually used for mating and is not a stinger at all, but that being said, I still don't trust that, okay? And you know what, that's all the juicy stuff I have on this one. I'm just really not a fan of these creepy bugs, let alone any bugs, so this one goes hand in hand with the roaches. Get the hell out of here. At number six, we have the infamous rattlesnake. What makes this guy so mysterious? Well, most of the time, we won't realize one's anywhere close to you until it's too late. These crazy quick snakes strike fast and hard, and the only warning it will give you is the sound of it shaking its rattler tail, meaning you are in for some big trouble. These snakes can be found almost anywhere nowadays, even as far as north as Canada, even where I live. I know back home the government released six of them in our county to help with our wild turkey problem, which was great because, you know, now we got rid of our wild turkey problem and now what do we have? A rattlesnake problem. What a smart idea. Coming in at our halfway point at number five, we have the infamous giant squid. For centuries, these crazy large creatures were said to be legend and creatures of most likely myth. Stories of ships being swallowed by giant squid-like creatures and attacks from these creatures were popular for years. Then suddenly, scientists actually found one. They found giant squid just off the Ogasawara Islands in Japan. The giant squid they caught measured 24 feet long or 7 meters long and it finally proved the existence of these massive creatures that people have been talking about for centuries. That's crazy. These creatures can even grow up to 30 feet in length and humans have become obsessed with them after their discovery. I mean, I get it. Like I've said it before, I was once obsessed with the Loch Ness Monster and if that was proven real, then I would be even more obsessed with it. So if I never get to see my Nessie at least, I get my giant squid. And speaking of Nessie, at number four we have the Plesiosaurus. That's right, for those of you that aren't as aware of the Loch Ness Monster lore as I am, one of the creatures that many believe to be the Loch Ness Monster is the prehistoric creature called the Plesiosaurus. Now, this is another creature that has sightings that date back centuries, all the way back to when St. Columba sailed the loch and demanded the beast to go back to its underwater dwellings. Now, this one has no real proof aside from just what the lore and the sightings have told us over the years, but there is one theory. Back before the 
ice age, the lock was connected to the ocean and the plesiosaurus would actually come to the lock and lay eggs and mate. Some believe that some of these creatures and eggs could have survived the ice age and continue to survive living off the plentiful sturgeon that also called the Loch Ness home. Whether it's real or not, these prehistoric creatures shouldn't exist, but Nessie, whatever you are, I'm glad you exist. At number three, we have the Stymphalian birds. We all know the great Disney character of Hercules, but did we know he was actually based on a supposedly real muscle man? One of the labors of Hercules was that he had to kill the Stymphalian birds, giant man-eating birds who also threw their feces. Gross. But scientists today actually claim that these birds did in fact exist. They were actually the host eagle and this bird stood over six feet tall and had a wingspan of over eight feet wide. These birds would sit atop trees and would swoop in at 60 miles per hour to catch its prey. They would then disembowel its prey right after. Ouch. <laughs> Apparently it was no match for Hercules, but I doubt if he is real that he actually beat the giant bird, because I mean, come on, buddy. Lucky for us though, these birds went extinct around the 15th century, so, <laughs> you know, we're fine for now, but keep an eye out. At number two, we have the Chupacabra. The Chupacabra was first spotted in the 1970s in Puerto Rico. Then tons of sightings occurred in the 1990s, with many finding local animals and livestock to be horribly mutilated and drained of blood. Many descriptions of this possibly fictional beast have varied, but the common descriptors have been a hairless, alien-like monster with spikes going down its back and with glowing red eyes. But scientists have a theory of what this creature actually is. They think it could actually just be coyotes suffering from sarcoptic mange, which is an inflammatory skin condition caused by an itch-inducing parasitic mite. And while these infected wolves or coyotes usually just go for the hunt, they can be led to go for the easier kill, which is livestock. Once again, no matter what the chupacabra actually is, it is wicked scary sounding and I ain't sure I want to go anywhere near this one for a sighting because I like my blood inside my body. And finally, coming in at our number one spot is Big Daddy Bigfoot. We all know Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Abominable Snowman, Yeti, whatever you want to call him. Stories of large man-like creatures living in the deep wooded areas of the world have been told for years. Some have recorded giant footprints with some of them turning out to be a hoax, while others are still relatively unexplained. One of the best pieces of possible evidence is the Patterson-Gimlin footage that was taken in 1967 near Bluff Creek in North California. To this day, this footage is still highly debated over and many no longer know what to believe. Do we live with giant monsters hiding away from us? Is Bigfoot an alien? Is it just an unknown species? Or is it just one hairy man who is walking all over the freaking place? Either way, this is one mysterious creature that shouldn't exist, but very well might. If you enjoyed these Bigfoot photos that were leaked by the government, then you will for sure like this video next. Don't be a chump like the government. Protect your computers from cybersecurity threats before it's too late. Click the video now to find out more.